of is people are continually saying, well, EVs are too expensive. Uh, the Hup Yates electric car had a multiple of 166.5 times what an average worker made in 1908-1910 time frame. In 1908, when Henry Ford introduced the Model T and he completely rearranged how cars were put together, by 1920, you could then pick up a Ford Model T, a new one, for $260, less than a 20% of what the average worker made. When are we going to get a $25,000 electric car? What we're saying is, is when are we going to get a Model T? Hi, I'm David with EV World News. I'm here today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore, is back with us. How's it going, Bill? It's going fine, thank you. All right, Bill, now it's time for you to tell us about some of the changes that have been going on since 1910 in the uh, EV space. Yeah, I got into a long and engaging conversation. Started with uh, my original uh, chat box <laughs> that I, uh, Pi, Pi AI, and then I came across another one uh, called Deep AI. You know, one of the things that we have, issues that we have, is people are continually saying, well, EVs are too expensive. And there's the, uh, you know, there's a story where the people are putting off now or, or people are, are, are not going back to, what was it, 46% are not going back to, to electric cars after they've driven one. And... No, that's not what it said. It said that something like they were going to buy a, a, an additional car. Yeah, but then also the, the, the point being, was being made is that they're going to delay their purchase of an, of an electric vehicle. Because the question is generally asked, are you are you looking to buy a next your next car to be electric? And people are saying, well, I think I'll keep the one I have. And actually, that's a trend. The age of our cars is really increasing substantially, but we'll still consider it. Um, but not this next go around. We're still more comfortable, and we think the technology needs to improve some more. And of course, that's happening. So I started that kind of a conversation. So in 1908, a revolution took place in 1908 when Henry Ford introduced the Model T and he completely rearranged how cars were put together and, and you know, all that sort of technology that, that suddenly sprang. Because up to this point, these cars were basically being, each car was being built by hand. Uh, I started looking at some of the old ads for the, uh, all of the different electric car companies that were out there. We think of Detroit Electric, and we think of, you know, maybe Waverly, a bunch of them out there. One I found was the Hup Yates. Never heard of it, but it's the Hup Yates is kind of the lucid of its day, you know, top of the line, expensive, equivalent in 19, you know, in, in our dollars, but equivalent in 20, you know, in 1908, 1910 time frame of a car well over 100 twelve thousand dollars right right so henry ford revolutionized that with the introduction of the model t which was selling for depending on your options and there weren't a lot of options 850 dollars okay now the average workman at that point the average wage of a workman was 750 dollars a year so when you look at that then the cost of a of a model t was only about one point i think three or multiple of what the person made in a year, as opposed to these handmade cars, these luxury EVs, which Henry Ford's wife drove, by the way, that, you know, the, the, the wage differential there was multiples. In fact, the, uh, the Hup Yates electric car had a multiple of 166.5 times what an average worker made in 1908-1910 time frame. So that really got me to looking at that sort of thinking, wow. So when we start talking about, well, all these headlines, when are we going to get a $25,000 electric car? What we're saying is, is when are we going to get a Model T? Because the Model T in 1908 was comparable in ratio of price to what a, uh, a $25,000 EV would cost today. And this led down to this whole rabbit hole of, of okay, 
the other issue is is electricity. And I really found this interesting because people say, well, we don't have any place to charge it. And we know for about 40% of the population, that's true. If you live in a big apartment complex, you've got no place to charge it unless you have a long extension cord and you hang it out your window and you run it out to your parking spot. Or you're lucky enough to have a garage and that garage has a 110 plug in it, which, of course, we know takes all night to put 30 or 40 miles of you know, range back in the car. So then I start, So I started looking at that, and I said, well, how many people in 1910 had electricity? And so in 1910, 36.9% of American homes had electricity. Well, how was that electricity distributed? In other words, does everybody have access to it? No. Most of that electricity, uh, the homes in urban areas, 64% of those homes had electricity. Suburbs were only then starting to develop because we had the availability of private automobiles. Uh, 44.8% of those homes, because most of those were going to be new homes, right? Yep. And so they had electricity to put in the new homes. Rural communities had 24.3%. And it wasn't until the 1950s that we got rural electrification to see more and more of those coming up. So then I asked, how was that distributed nationally, regionally? So here's the interesting thing that I found. Okay, states with the highest electrification rates, in other words, over 50% of the population, were Massachusetts, New York, Illinois, Michigan, and California. And the states with the lowest amount of electricity, you know, availability, were Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Louisiana. And I thought, well, that's interesting. That kind of mirrors what's happening with the with the penetration of electric cars. And so uh, the deep AI responded, that is a great observation. <laughs> yes, the patterns of electrification, and I'm quoting here, the patterns of electrification in the early 20th century do share some similarities with the adoption of electric vehicles, EVs, in the 21st century. In both cases, we see an urban-rural divide. Uh, just like the early 20th century, we see regional differences similar to the regional disparities of electrification rates in the early 20th century. We see early adopters. We see infrastructure challenges. We see government policies. Okay? Uh, all of these kind of mirroring what has happening over a century ago when we were starting to put electricity into homes and businesses and farms. Uh, there are also significant differences between the two periods. Scalability, a widespread adoption of electricity in the early 20th century, was a gradual process that took decades. EV adoption is happening much faster due to advances in technology and economies of scale. Cost. While electricity was once a luxury good only accessible to the wealthy, EVs are becoming increasingly affordable as battery costs decrease. Ever heard that message before? <laughs> uh, network effects. The widespread adoption of electric electricity created a snowball effect, making it easier for individuals and businesses to adopt. Similarly, as more people adopt EVs, it becomes easier for others to do as well, which I thought was really, really interesting uh, to get the response. But to see that similarity, the places where most of the EVs are is where electrification was first early adopted, which is fascinating to me. Well, it, it makes sense that it's always going to happen first in the big cities, right? Yep. And uh, EVs have a certain, you know, appeal to people as commuter cars, so it makes more sense that they're... And the other thing is, too, where are gas prices the highest? <laughs> Speaking of gas prices, one of the sales pitches of one of the electric car manufacturers, I think it was Detroit Electric, radio wasn't widespread in two fact, I don't think it was even available in, in 1910. So they used newspapers. So one of the ads in the newspapers has a thermometer, two thermometers next to each other. One says the price of gasoline, the other says the price of electricity. And the price of gasoline, it says, is going up but the price of electricity is coming down. <laughs> so I looked at it. I looked at the uh, thermometer, and they had the thermometer. Yeah, well, the, the the price of gasoline showed in the illustration was was where is where the thermometer said twenty three. So I think it must be cents twenty four cents. Yeah, so what it is twenty four cents or twenty three cents 
of, a, of gasoline per gallon, wow, really sounds cheap, is equivalent today to $6.58 a gallon, right? California prices. California prices in 1908 or, you know, mid-1910s. So uh, that was fascinating. Also, that Ford Revolution in, 2000, in 1908, that car went on sale for essentially you know, $850, which was slightly more than what the average annual wage was of a worker in the United States. Remember, I said it was $753. But not at Ford. That wasn't the wage at Ford, though. Oh, oh no, 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 because Ford did his little deal. Well, I'm going to pay him more because I had created a market for my cars. So that was, that was brilliant. But what happened is over time, by 1920, now the Ford Model T is becoming pretty you know, uh, long in the limb, so to speak, in terms of technology. But by, 19, oh, by 1920, you could then pick up a Ford Model T, a new one, for $260. Oh, wow. So they had dropped that premium from 1.35 or whatever it was, the base wage or the, the, the annual income of a worker, to where it was now less than, I think it was like 20% of what the average worker made. That was what continuing improvements in efficiency and efficient could do. So if we saw something similar to that, similar to that, we could see the price of electric cars really dramatically coming down if we have that same sort of technological improvement along the way. And the, and the, and the Chinese, of course, are already showing us uh, some of that. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.